Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who tuned in to vlog number one last week, thank you so much for supporting, subscribing, leaving a like, and a few suggestions. I'm back at the Bellagio a week later. I'm hoping for some action, which Friday night is pretty easy to find on the strip. If you haven't already and you enjoy the video, please subscribe and like, and let's get into what you came here for. I want to give you some context to what I walk into here. We start a new table and with the exception of one player, the player in seat 7, we are just looking at the most novice, tightest, nittiest table you can possibly imagine, which just isn't that normal for the Bellagio on a Friday night, even at 1-3. I really hate playing at tables like this. Nobody calls without the nuts. You really have to change your strategy. Luckily, one of the players there sat down with me for a quick interview. Interesting. I am EJ Jones, and I am the man who knits. I'm going to write this off as my channel's first major production issue, but for whatever reason, I swear I had this hand recorded. I could not find it anywhere, but it is a very familiar feeling. I'm sure you've been in this position. Luckily, I was able to find something online, which pretty much explains exactly what happened. All in. He shoves. Lewis folds. Blair is out. I call. There it is. Yes. Yeah, so I'm the guy with the pocket kings with a clean run out for my opponent. Uh, he's got $200. Uh, I move his way. I add 200 more to my stack to put me in 500 into this game. Really frustrating because this is the type of table it's going to take like 20 hands to try to get this money back. But if nobody's calling without the nuts, my strategy is just to play in position aggressive and bet people out of pots lay my hands down when i know i'm beat and repeat my next hand i pick up three five of hearts under the gun so sticking to my strategy i pop it up to eight dollars i get several callers around the table where five people to the flop the flop comes out seven nine king with two hearts so i'm gonna keep the pressure on i bet 15. all things considered out of position this size bet i thought would at least get a collar you get a feeling from what i'm up against here i end up with a pretty small pot and a little bit of advertising the next hand i play on the button i pick up queen four offsuit why not i'm in position this is my strategy so we're off to a flop with a few other players and the flop comes out Bing! No, I, I flop middle pair with the queen. The player in the big blind who is, he's, he bets the minimum $3 into 12. He's definitely the guy who's not calling without top top or the nuts or the second nuts. He already checks to me in position, so I throw together a bet of $13. God, he looks like he's going into the tank here. It's a pretty small pot, but he ends up folding, and I turn over my four just to keep him guessing a little bit. Here I pick up pocket jacks. Now, I want to point out that I am awful at big pocket pairs. I do the worst thing possible. Warning, do not play pocket jacks this way. You'll see why, but I show this hand for other reasons, just to give you an idea of what the climate at the table is. The flop comes out, seven, eight, nine, two spades. I mean, I do have a gut shot to the straight here, but it's really hard to know where you're at in the hand when you play pocket jacks goofy like this. It checks to me in position. I keep uh, the pressure on. I bet 13, but I do get a caller from under the gun. I get my first clue. I am behind in this hand when the player in the six seat tries to raise but doesn't put nearly enough in, then sort of tries to play it off. Uh, either way, I'm pretty sure I'm in bad shape. Regardless, the player to my right makes the call, and we're going to go three-way to the turn. The turn comes out and pairs the board with a seven of clubs. 
Now I've got to worry that I'm just drawn to two cards instead of six. The player in seat six seems really, really comfortable. He makes a small bet on the turn, which, you know, I just have to call, even with two outs, knowing he's got money behind. So I throw in $12 into this size pot. I just have to make this call. The river comes out and pairs the board again with another nine. At this point, I just... I know I'm in bad shape, and this is the first time I've seen this guy go to the river. He puts a big bet in. I turn my hand over, and he shows 9-8 for the full house. Next, I pick up Ace-5 of Hearts Under the Gun. I go ahead and pop it up to $8. I feel like my consistent betting is starting to bring more people into the pot. I get four callers, but now I'm at a position, I mean, I have a fairly marginal hand, especially considering I'm under the gun. I'm generally trying to represent scare cards here, but it's a little tough, though the flop comes out giving me the nut flush draw with six nine of hearts and a king of clubs. I go ahead and check. There's a player two seats to my left who is just uber tight. He bets $10 into a $40 pot. I I'm certainly not going anywhere here. The player to his left makes the call. We end up losing one player. I quickly throw my chips in. The player to my left quickly throws his chips in. I am hoping for some love on the turn. Unfortunately, that comes the four of clubs, so I go ahead and check. Player to my left checks. And here we go with another $10 bet into an $80 pot. Clearly, he's just letting me draw for a crazy good price and sort of bloating the pot a little bit in case I hit my hand. The player to his left thinks for just a second. She makes the call. I quickly make the call. Unfortunately, we lose to the player to my left, but I hit the flush on the river and just bet out 30. My thinking is, I don't really care. This is a great price to call with top pair with anything. The player to the original better's left is just, you can tell she can't wait to muck her cards. He goes into the tank, but again, he is just not calling with top pair. He is not calling without the nuts. That's what makes this strategy great against really soft players who won't call without the nuts. Any scare card, you should bet. You hit your hand. The problem is you still have a hard time getting paid off. He folds. I'm clearly not going to show that hand. And I scoop another little pot, getting me a little bit closer to even. The next hand, I find myself in the low jack position with queen 10 offsuit. I'm just going to go ahead and throw in the call here. Raising preflop and scooping up dead money is great, but I feel like more people are at least starting to get more involved. So my plan is to try to outplay people post-flop. At this point, the button calls, the blinds call. We're going five way to the flop here. I'm kind of going moment to moment on what I'm going to do. I've got decent position, but I get a really nice flop. Queen 7 deuce rainbow. I flop top pair with a 10 kicker. So after it gets checked to me, I throw out about a half size pot bet of $8. That gets a call from the button. The player to her left, man, this guy does not believe me at all at this point. He makes the call as well, and we're going to go to the turn. I mean, I could not have scripted a better turn. The turn comes out, the ten of spades, giving me top two pair. This type of table would have really slowed down if nobody had a queen and the queen paired. As much as I'd love to have trips, this just suits this situation better. I put out a bet of $20, which gets a fold from the button, but the player in seat six, again, this guy just does not believe me at all. He's seen some of the bluffs I turn over. So when the river comes out, a four of hearts, he checks to me again very firmly which kind of tells me he's pretty weak i put out a bet of 30 dollars, just hoping he'll make the call it's great to have this reputation in these situations and frankly at a 1-3 table that's playing super nitty it's not really very expensive to get it i turn over my two pair he had queen nine so i scoop another decent pot and now i am just about i don't know 45 dollars or so away from even the next hand I play, I look down at the monster, seven deuce offsuit, just about when the dealer's announcing that someone else exposed a seven. 
still, I'm in position. I do want to get involved. I feel like showing seven deuce down, especially to this table, will really do wonders for my reputation. The flop comes out, and I flop bottom pair with a seven kicker. Five deuce eight with two hearts. The player in seat seven, who's actually a pretty decent player, bets out $10. So I've got him on something like ace eight or eight ten or jack eight, something like top pair. The other players in the pot fold, so now I am heads up, in position, liking where I'm at, uh, hoping to get a little love on the turn, but it comes out the four of diamonds, which is definitely a scare card, so when it gets checked to me, I throw out a bet of $30. I feel like I can play this player a little bit differently than other people at the table, but I still feel like I need to move him off some kind of hand, especially when he makes the call on the turn. We go to the river, which comes out the nine of spades. It's quickly checked to me. I announce 55, and before I can get the chips in the pot, I get a fold. I get to turn over seven deuce. I scoop a decent pot, and we're off to the next hand, where I pick up ace-king suited in clubs. The player to my right limps in, so I pop it up a little to 13. The player to my left is thinking about it, but thinks better. It gets folded by the button, so I'm back in position exactly where I want to be. The big blind makes the call. The player to my right folds, so we're off heads up in position where I like to be to the flop, which comes out perfect. King 4 8 rainbow. I've got top top. So I'm going to keep betting just like with my other hands. I throw out a bet of $25. He only thinks about it for a second and mucks his hand. I'm able to turn over something of actual value this time, scoop a small pot, and get a little bit closer to even again. In fact, I am now officially $7 in the black. This next hand, I pick up King-7 suited in the big blind. There is a limp from the cutoff position, a limp from the button, and then a raise to 13. The player to my right makes the call. I'm definitely calling for 10 more dollars, even out of position. I'm hoping to induce action from the players who limped, which does get a call from the player in the cutoff position. The button folds, and we are off to a flop four ways. The flop comes out about as good as I could hope for. 6-5-3 with two diamonds, giving me the second nut flush draw. Now the player to my right, first to act, bets $7 into a $40 pot. I'm quickly just going to make the call, especially with a couple players to act, including the initial raiser behind me. He just makes the call, so I get a better feeling for where he's at in the hand as well. The turn comes out the 10 of clubs. No real help for my hand. Now it gets checked around. It is amazing when you hit your flush and you're just getting the right price to call all the way down. It gets checked to me. No more checking here. I put out a bet of $20, which gets a quick fold from the original better and an eventual fold from the player to my right. Scooping another little pot. I'm feeling good having made all that money back from getting my kings in against aces right in the start of the session. That's when I pick up pocket fives. The table dynamic is starting to change a little bit. It's getting a little bit looser at this point. A few players have changed out. A few others have started betting a little bit more. So the flop comes out 4-4-3. Four, four, I'm feeling pretty decent about my hand. I mean, I've got an over pair to the three. If someone's got a four, I'm probably going to find out pretty quickly. So the player in the small blind bets $3 on the flop, which gets a fold. The player to my right looks down. He bumps it up to $6. I'm like, what is going on here? I'm going to make the call. I'm hoping she's going to make the call. She quickly does. And we're going to go off to the turn. The next best thing to a five hits the turn in the four of clubs, giving me a full house. No longer have to worry about straights. I'm not really worried about an overpair here, but the player to my right decides that he's going to go out and bet $10. At this point, I'm pretty sure he's got a three. 
I, I can't really put him on anything else if I don't think he's got a pocket pair. His straight draw, I don't think he'd bet with. This actually gets a call from the player in the small blind as well, which bumps the pot up a little bit. I'm really not that concerned about the player to my right. I am worried about the player in the small blind. I don't feel like she really knows where she's at. So when it gets checked to me, I put out $20. She looks down, mucks her cards. The player to my right, he makes a quick call. I turn over pocket fives. He turns over the small art full house with the three. And I scoop another nice little pot. Here I am with pocket kings again with a bunch of limpers. I just say, not losing with this hand again. I bump it up to 55, scoop up the dead money. I think you're gonna enjoy the last hand of the session. I'm up about $50, but then end up losing about 150. Again, the table dynamic has changed a lot. I come in late to this hand. There was a small raise. The flop comes out, four, five, three. I've got six, eight of diamonds, giving me an open end straight draw. The original Razor just throws out a bet at 10, which I call. And we're off to the turn, which brings an ace of diamonds, bringing in four to the straight. It also brings in my flush draw, so to go along with my open ender, I'm feeling pretty decent about making a call of $20. The river comes out and it is a beauty in the nine of diamonds. I get a $40 bet from the original aggressor. I'm not having any of that. I'm going to bump it up to 125. He's a he thought he said call, so he's about to turn his hand over and announced, "I have a straight." Now this puts him into the tank. He's running through all the hands I could have. He mentions he has two six, so he flopped a straight. He's asking if I have six seven. He mentions the flush draw, but it seems unlikely with it being backdoored. He finally makes the call. I turn over my flush, just really well disguised. This is where it gets tricky. I've definitely been in this position where I flop the world and just play a little too slow. I mean, I played that hand really goofy earlier with pocket jacks, but this table has now turned into what I consider to be a regular Friday night table at the Bellagio. Definitely loosened up, lots of action, a lot more chips moving around. And that's it for episode two. Really hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe for more action. I plan on putting out at least a video a week moving forward. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think or what you might like to see more of. In the meantime, until then, good luck out there. Life could be a dream, sweetheart. Hello, hello again. Shaboom and hope we meet again.